Brian in Flint, Michigan. Hey, Brian, how are you? Good. How are you guys? Great. How can Ken and I help today? Well, I'm kind of in a predicament here. Um, I'm a diesel mechanic by trade. Um, sorry, I'm a little nervous, but... Uh, That's okay. Take your time. <laughs> what I got going on is I'm kind of in a toxic work environment. Um, I've got a job offer on the plate, and it's more per hour, but we're trying to get out of debt. We, if if I did my numbers right, we'll be out by March, with, staying with my current job. Um, I work 60 hours a week, if not more. So there's no no real home life in, in our lamp. This new job is no overtime, a straight 40 hours, but only $2 an hour more. Mm. And the insurance is more expensive. Benefits package isn't 100% there. But my, like I said, my current job, it's a lot of overtime, a lot of, you know. Yeah, Brian, let me ask you this. Brian, so I'm assuming you called us and you've run these numbers. And what I mean by numbers is, have you run the numbers on, okay, you got a $2 an hour bump, but it's back to 40 hours. How does that compare with the 60 hours you're putting in now uh, with your current rate? And then the cost of the uh, the benefits going up and everything. So have you run the side by side between current job and new offer? Have you done that? If if I keep the overtime and all of that, it's about almost thirty thousand a year less to take the new job. Yeah, but that's that's where my that's where my predicament is. It's like, well, if I stay at this track, I'm looking at March. We're looking at March to be out of debt. Well, but but you also have to take into consideration, Brian, that you're freeing up 20 hours in your week that you could go take another part-time job, do something else that brings you joy, gets you out of this toxic environment, and you're still able to up your income a little bit to maybe still stay on track. Okay. That's yeah. a possibility. I, I'm, I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, Which that's way, an option on the table. When you called us, you gave us an either or. Which way were you leaning before the call started? You know, I've been leaning both ways. It's like, do I stick it out just to make sure, you know, make us stick out our plan? Brian, I, I've Brian, been up Brian, in the, Brian, I want to know. I know you've been going both ways, but you were leaning one direction. I just know it. Which way were you leaning before you called us? Partially sticking with my, my job currently. Yeah, and the reason is is because you know what you've got there. You're working 60 hours. You keep this up, and you can. You can gut it out. You can keep it going. It's not fun, but March is going to be here before you know it. So my question is, let's go to the future, okay, because I I think this is almost a false choice for you. It's less about dropping back to 40 hours a week, okay, and it's more about what's the future look like. So – Let's fast forward to March. You're out of debt, okay, and you've been working so hard. And let's say that you backed off the overtime. What would you be wanting to do long term? Do you want to stay as a diesel mechanic, or would you want to uh, move into something else, or do we stay as a diesel mechanic where we are, or diesel mechanic somewhere else? I mean, what's that look like? Uh, it's always been my passion to be a, a diesel mechanic. Great. Um, so are you thinking you're going to drop back on the hours after we get out of debt in March? I would hope. I would hope to. Well, wait a second. What do, you mean, to. what do you mean you hope to? Do you not have a choice right now? I, I do have the choice to, to drop it back or, or continue pounding, it, pounding out the hours. Well, but wait, you said there's no home life. What, what, who, who's on the other end of that, and what do they feel about you staying at 60 hours a week after we get out of debt? Uh, I got a wife and, and daughter, and they wife would like to see me home a lot more. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, speaking as the resident husband on the panel, I would do that. I would be gazelle intense. I think she's probably on board with the 60 hours for the reasons, but but I would then you know start to drop back and maybe you know kind of wean yourself off of the 60 hours because you want to get to baby step three and that emergency fund as well. But I would do that. So I, I, I got to tell you, I wouldn't take the new job based on what you're telling me. Christy, you see anything else there? You got anything else on that? On- no, I will say, though, I, I always I don't like situations where I feel painted in a corner with two bad options 
Bad option here is I'm taking a $30,000 pay cut. Bad option here is I'm staying in a toxic work environment. I just encourage you um, to look at other options. So, Brian, you can stick this out. March will be here before you know it. This is not a, if you were saying this is three years from now, we'd be like, okay, right. let's assess a different path to get there. You staying on this path and be like, hey, we're just bu- going to buckle down for this season until March. We got our eye on the prize. We're so close to the finish line. You can do it and you will do it. But it's not a bad thing. If you want to explore what it would look like to fill those other 20 hours, so you're not home anymore, but you may be happier, you may be earning income in those 20 hours. That's an option on the table, but I think, I think Ken's right. You're, the clo- the low-hanging fruit, the quickest win is to stick with what you've got, what you know, has good benefits, has the income you need, and then in March, you reevaluate what yeah. you want to do, evaluate your pay, evaluate your schedule, evaluate everything because you're debt free and you've got a, a, some more margin and flexibility there that you've worked so hard for. Yeah. And I, and I, I would lean into the toxic part. I think that's right. I think I'm, I'm hearing toxic thrown around a lot. Uh, I get it, but, uh, but that is a very good point. And, and I, and I do think that if it truly is toxic, then diesel mechanics are always going to be needed, uh, whether it's diesel specific or just your mechanical abilities are so transferable so in that situation, Brian, now we're looking for a different different opportunity. So you would be doing what I call doing the right thing in the wrong place. If it truly is a toxic environment, I believe that uh, there's definitely some difficulties there. But you're just looking for a different place where whatever's going on in that workplace is not happening as much. So I, I, I'd sit tight and then let's look to move on after we get out of baby step two. We appreciate the trust and, and appreciate the call. And that really is a tough situation where <laughs> you're gazelle intense and, and you're going, good grief, this is exhausting. You it know? is. It is, And I it's think that's, that's the other thing too, where it's like you can buckle down for a season and we all have to do that at times. Um, but maybe there's, maybe there's another path there. If not, then you buckle down for that season. And when March comes, you open up your options. Yep.